Hello, thank you for coming. My name is Kellen Parker Van Dam. Uh, today I'm going to present on demonstratives as sentential comparatives in Pangwa Tangsa. This is something that we've noticed coming up in a few varieties of Pangwa Tangsa where uh, demonstratives based on the word order are used to convey a comparative um, um, attitude. First, I'd like to give a little bit of background information. Tangsa Nokte is a dialect continuum of tibeto burman This is classified as part of the Sal group of languages along with Bodogaro in Northeast India and in uh, Myanmar with Jinko, Kachin, uh, as well as languages like Tsak. Uh, it is, Pangwa is one of the northernmost groupings within Tangsa Nokte. They're sort of up right in the India-Myanmar border um, just before things start getting really mountainous over near Vijinagar. Uh, membership in SOL is usually based on lexical uh, qualifications. So, for example, having the stem for sun be something like SOL or reconstructed to SOL, uh, as well as a few other things. Pangwa as well has a few markers that sort of help um, clarify if a variety is part of Pangwa or not, although a lot of these are also extra linguistic. So, for example, there is a traditional song form called the Vihu song, which only Pangwa speakers, for the most part, have. A couple other groups have adopted it since then due to living in close proximity, um, but on linguistic grounds would not be considered Pangwa. Uh, additionally, there is a lot of variability between the different varieties of Tangsa, even within Pangwa Tangsa, and mutual intelligibility is uh, really not a useful marker for determining group classification in this case. So here's a rough overview of the geographic area. We have the Jinko Kachin languages on the far right in orange. We have Bodogaro languages in the blue. Uh, of course, these used to spread much more widely in the whole area around the Brahmaputra River Valley in Assam. And then the Northern Naga or Central Sol branch is in gray, with Tangsa Nokte being the black outline. Pangwa Tangsa is then primarily uh, concentrated in the northern part of this, both on the Burmese side and the Indian side of the border. Okay, so then let's get into the demonstratives. I want to give a brief overview of what they are and how they're used as demonstratives, and then we'll talk about the uh, comparative function. Within Pangwa Tangsa, there really are very few distinctions in the demonstrative system. So, for example, in Jingfo Kachin languages, you would have a proximal uh, d demonstrative, but then you also have multiple distal demonstratives that encode altitude. Uh, so this is something that Mark Post has called topographical diaxis, but basically the uh, distal demonstrative has to specify whether the thing to which you are referring is higher than the speaker, lower than the speaker, or at the same level. Uh, on the other side of the Sol languages in Bodogaro, you have a demonstrative system where you have proximal, distal, uh, remote, and very remote. Um, as called by uh, Sano von Bruegel, these are uh, levels of distal demonstratives that we also just don't find in Tangsa Nokte. So here on slide six is a uh, example of kind of a basic demonstrative system. You'll see there's some mismatch here. Part of this has to do with ways that linguists have uh, analyzed the languages. Part of this has to do with ways that the speakers describe the language, some of which itself is surely reflecting some uh, kind of drift in the systems. Generally, what we can say, though, is for the Pangwa varieties, which are the three at the top, Rida, Mushaung, and Cholim, we have a proximal demonstrative, which is Ara, and then for a distal, we have something either like Kura or Ina. Um, note that here, Cholim Pura is actually the same as Kura, it's just a sound change has occurred in this variety. The interesting thing here is that in Rira, Ina is the sort of default distal demonstrative, whereas in Moshang, Kura is that. Uh, in Moshang, Ina is only used for strong emphasis, and you can actually add Ina with Kura. So if you want to say, no, that is the one that I'm talking about, you can say Ina Kura something something, right? Uh, and then in Rira, Kura actually has more of a kind of topic marking or what we're going to call copula here, but isn't really copula, and I'll get to that shortly. But you can have, for example, the man tall uh, and separate those with Kura. Moshang has a separate particle, k, which is probably related to kara that they use for this, but you can see that the breakdown is not quite the same for all of these varieties. Uh, Hakun and Muklum, there on the bottom, are two other varieties of Tangsa Nokte. They are not Pangwa varieties, uh, and you can see their demonstrative system is a bit different, although this r stem does still show up in both varieties. Moving on to slide seven, these differences as well that we've seen in the previous slide, they're not a recent development. So we have, for example, uh, Needham's work from 1897. This is a 
uh, sort of very, very, very rough sketch grammar and vocabulary list for Moshang. And you can see the Arakura distinction still there with Ina not even making an appearance. Um, and on top of that, it's very likely, in fact, that this Kura, Ara, the Re base of that, as well as this Ke particle um, that Moshang has, which is, again, the thing that we're calling a copula for simplicity's sake, there probably is some relation to that, either that this Re has fused with Ke in, in creation of Kura, or that Kura has been reduced to Ke. Uh, it's sort of unclear. We don't have enough data yet. We haven't quite been able to dig into this as much as we'd like to, but there is clearly a connection there, which I'll show you a, a very good example of on the final slide. Um, on top of that, it's another sort of salient marker, a stereotype, in fact, of Pangwa speakers that they say kura a lot. So kura is the filler word, or pura in the case of cholim. Uh, and so if you wanted to say, you know, he uh, is big, you could say apik, you know, ajung, but often people in sort of um, uh, rough speech will say apik kura kura ajung, right? It'll have this extra kind of um, machine gun feeling to it with how often this shows up as a filler word, such that other groups can kind of stereotype and poke fun at Pangwa speakers for using this so much. Also, I should mention, I've said that this k or kura, depending on the variety, kind of functions something like a copula. This isn't really what it's doing. It's just linking a subject and a nonverbal predicate. Um, there are other ways that it's been described, either as a topic marker. Um, it's been described simply as k because it's unclear what to call it. Um, however, uh, Deep Jodi Goswami, my co-presenter, has written his master's thesis specifically on the use of kura and the many, many uses of kura in Urura. Uh, this will not match perfectly with what's happening in Moshang, but it is fairly close. Um, the reason that we're simply calling it a copula here is because it's too much to get into for this talk, and that's not actually the focus of, of this presentation. Um, however, uh, it should also be mentioned that in Pangwa, word order is very flexible for the most part, which is one of the reasons that we think this comparative use of kura is something that is, is emergent. It's only happening in a few varieties. And it's something where you can take this very, very free word order where you have the noun and then the modifiers, whether they are um, numerals uh, with classifiers or demonstratives or adjectives, and they can either precede or follow. Uh, and it doesn't really change the meaning in most cases with the exception of this comparative use of the demonstratives. So let's get into some examples. The first examples I'd like to show are from Rura. Uh, now, this is a case where kura is being used strictly as this demonstrative rather than the sort of um, topic or, or copula use. Uh, so, for example, in example one, we have kura ashe kamjum, which is strictly speaking that red house. And it is the distal demonstrative in this case. Kura does not generally get used as a proximal demonstrative. You could also say in this case, ina ashe kamjum for the same meaning, or you could say kura jum ashe kam. Uh, and both of these would have the meaning of, of that house is red. Um, however, we also do have it coming up in this kind of uh, copular topic marking function. This is an example too. So, ijupsa, the state of sleeping or the thing that is sleeping. Ijupsa uh, kura uh, ahan is saying sleeping is good, right? Someone likes sleeping, they're just saying sleep's a good thing to have. Moving on to slide 11, in example 3, we have the uh, proximal demonstrative. So we're saying arajum uh, ajung, that house is big. Sorry, this house is big, and we're using the proximal demonstrative in this case. So arajum uh, ajung. Um, this is really a very kind of typical sentence. Again, we could also say inajum uh, ajung. Now, if we add kura in this sort of copular slot, this would also work. Uh, in Ura, and from what we've been able to uh, investigate so far, it's not clear that this comparative function is coming up in Ura in the same way that it is showing up in Moshang. So with that said, moving on to Moshang examples, like with uh, Ura, we also have Ara as a um, proximal demonstrative. So we can say Arajimka Ajung, that house is big, sorry, this house is big. We could also say Arajim Ajung, this copula is often there. It's considered 
better speech. It's considered uh, not that the other is agrammatical if it's not there. It's just that this is sort of seen as a more complete utterance. Um, and at least for my interactions with the community, as someone who is trying to learn the language and speak the language with people, um, they are giving me these kinds of learner's corrections where, oh, you should say this. Yes, some people will say it like this, but you should say this, in which case this k is, is really preferred here. Um, this example in example four really does mean this house is big. But if we switch the order between jim and ara, we can have in example five either this feeling that houses in general are big or again this house is big. So example five can mean the same thing as example four, but it can also be used as a much more general sort of feeling houses in general are big. Um, this is of course an elicited sentence, uh, elicited example. There's not a reason this would necessarily come up like this in natural speech, but if you know someone is asking, oh, a child says, oh, tell me about elephants. I haven't ever seen one. You could say, jaw araka ajung, right? So elephants in general are big, uh, so that the child would then know. Moving on to example six, what we see here then is using kura instead of ara. So kura is the distal demonstrative. It's the main only distal demonstrative that we find in Moshaung, because again, ina is used as an emphatic marker. Uh, if we say kura jim kura jung, then here we're truly saying that house is big. And there's this sense that I'm clearly pointing at something, or if there are two houses, then this will be the house that's farther away from the speaker. And um, so this is sort of a standard, uh, sort of way of speaking but if we move on to example seven you can also switch those like we did with the previous examples and say jim kuraka ajung so in this case what you're saying is either that house is big if the context is very clear you're pointing at it or something like that or if there is a house that is particularly big then this has a comparative sense to it in which case if you just said jim kuraka ajung based on sort of the contextual clues and other things that are going on, this would feel like an incomplete utterance because you would expect there to be something to which you are comparing. Uh, so in this case, we have example eight, which is naka rin, uh, buffalo are small, right? Smaller than houses in general, unless you have a very small house or a very large buffalo, it's possible. Um, and so then this would be used strictly as kind of a comparative function, which kura jim kura jung, as we saw in example six, would not carry that same feeling. Uh, this is something that is widely used, but it's also something where since this sentence in example seven can have both of these readings, uh, it's not something that has really firmly taken root yet, but it seems like it may be going in that direction, so time will tell. Additionally, uh, with example nine, we can have multiple qualities. So we're saying the house is big, but instead we could be saying that something is both big and heavy, or something is both small and big in the case of example nine. So if we are talking about some kind of uh, conifer tree, then we can say that the trees are generally softer, but bigger than something else. And then again, we would expect something like what we have uh, that we're comparing it to, so for example, bamboo, right? Bamboo is generally harder than certain trees in the jungle, uh, and on top of that, it's generally smaller than, than certain trees in the jungle. So in this case, it could also mean simply that um, that trees uh, are generally softer and big, or it could mean that they are bigger and softer than something. And again, this is kind of heavily based on the context and heavily based on other factors, such as if you're pointing at something or not. Finally, uh, on slide 16, we can also have multiple items within a set. So instead of just saying trees or just saying houses, we can have this construction where trees and houses are together. Uh, and where this demonstrative goes then, whether it would follow both of the nouns or just one of them, is completely flexible. Uh, so this is seen in ex example 10, A, B, and C. We have tree demonstrative and elephant demonstrative uh, copula big. All three of these sentences, 10 A, B, and C, have the same meaning. They can all have the same comparative sense. Uh, they can all have the same non-comparative sense if there's some reason why the sentence would come up with that way. Um, but in this case, the comparison really does include both trees and elephants against something else, as opposed to comparing trees to elephants. So 10 A, B, and C are still treated generally as a comparative structure with something to happen in the next sentence that must be brought up or else it sort of violates a maxim of quality 
um, sort of expectations of the conversation, politeness, etiquette things, um, or if you have it without any demonstratives, as in example 11, there is no comparative function whatsoever. So the demonstrative really is needed to convey this comparative function. Once more, going back to our much earlier examples, you could also say with the demonstrative before the noun, so you could say, could a pujung ni, uh, could a jo, could a jung, saying that tree and that elephant are big. This would also be deemed grammatical, but not comparative. In example 12, we see one complication that comes up, which is if the subject of the sentence, sort of the noun phrase subject, already has an implicit comparison built into it, as in example 12, then the presence or absence of kuda and the placement uh, of kuda does not make any difference whatsoever to a comparative function. So in this example, what we're saying is we are specifying a certain fruit, jitai, uh, and we're saying that a fruit which is lower than that one, a nevo jitai, kuda shoja. You're saying that the fruit that is lower than the one that I'm specifying is reddening, it's ripening, right? Um, in this case, you could have kuda here, and when the sentence was first given to me, it had kuda here. Uh, but through conversations, we've sort of worked out that you could also have the, re the, the reduced form. Again, we don't know if ke is the base form and kuda is expanded, or if kuda is the base and ke is reduced. But in Moshang, you could have either one here, or you could have nothing at all. You could just say, uh, in which case it still has the same meaning. Kuda serves no comparative function here because the comparison is already in the sort of uh, noun phrase that, that is the focus of the sentence, uh, being the fruit that is lower than the fruit than that one over there, like this. So this is also kind of interesting, the fact that kuda can either be present or absent, and it can also be kuda or it can be ke in Moshang, because this sort of lends some support to this, this strong feeling that we have uh, that kuda and ke are clearly etymologically linked in some way. There's some connection between these. Okay, so to conclude, in addition to these typical demonstratives that we have, both proximal and distal, uh, and the emphatic ina in moshang, or the sort of topicalizing kura in rura, uh, we also have this function based on word order we, where we can make explicit comparisons between things in one sentence with that in another. Uh, in, in addition, these demonstratives, or sorry, these nouns which are modified by the demonstratives can take other modifiers such as specifiers in the case of the fruit, or adjectives, or numerals and classifiers, uh, and on top of that, multiple qualities, such as soft and big, or multiple objects, such as houses and elephants, can exist within a single comparative demonstrative phrase. Additionally, if there is no postnominal demonstrative, then there's no comparative sense, either implied or understood by the speaker. Uh, finally, explicit comparisons, such as the example of the fruit that is lower than the other fruit, there is no comparative sense that can be added by using the demonstrative postnominally because it is already included in the noun phrase that you are comparing the two things. Uh, finally, the comparative use is only one sense of this, and you can also have a post-nominal demonstrative where there isn't a comparative sense, if this is clear from the context, but you cannot have a pre-nominal demonstrative and have a comparative sense from that position. It has to be post-nominal to be able to be comparative, although not all post-nominal demonstratives are necessarily going to be understood or meant as comparative. So this is something that we feel is coming up, uh, it's developed in Moshang. Moshang has innovated in a few other ways compared to other varieties of Pangwa. Uh, whether or not this is something that we're going to be able to find in other varieties that are nearby or something that might come up in other varieties nearby due to contact with Moshang is yet to be seen. Hopefully this is something that, you know, 10 years from now we'll be able to address uh, in greater detail. So thank you very much. Uh, I appreciate your coming to this recorded talk and look forward to uh, questions when the time is right for it. Thank you.